Whatever the motivations of the Discovery Institute, the Intelligent Design Movement, or the authors of the book of Pandas and People, Judge Jones would need to focus on the motivation of the Dover Area School Board. Mr. Buckingham, I'd like to show you what has been identified as Exhibit P145. You'll need to look at your monitor. The book that was presented to me for biology was laced with Darwinism from the beginning to the end. William Buckingham is head of the curriculum committee for the Dover School District. He's also a board member. He strongly believes creationism needs to be taught in the classroom. My opinion that it's okay to teach Darwin, but you have to balance it with something else, such as creationism. This was back in the very early days of the intelligent design thing. And don't you know, I could not think of the words intelligent design. I just couldn't. The camera's rolling, so I say creationism. In hindsight, I should have said nothing at all. But I said creationism. I was, I was like a, a deer caught in the headlights of a car. And I misspoke. Pure and simple. I, I made a human mistake. Freudian slip, right, Mr. Buckingham? I wouldn't say a Freudian slip. I would say a human mistake. And it was not Buckingham's only mistake. Both Buckingham and Bonsell had sworn in their depositions that they did not know who donated the 60 copies of Pandas to the high school. But by the time Buckingham took the witness stand, a different story emerged. I stood up in front of our church one Sunday morning. We had to come up with, I think it was like $1,100 to buy these books. I said, I'm not asking anybody for a dime. I'm not telling you I want anything. But we believe in the power of prayer in that church. I said, just pray that the money comes in. Buckingham's prayers were answered with donations from members of the church. So I deposited the money in our personal checking account, my wife and I have, and I wrote a check to be passed on to whoever's going to buy the books. It was my understanding at that time that a businessman in the community had agreed to take the money and buy the books and donate them to the school. That time I didn't know who it was. But at the trial, Buckingham admitted he had given that check to Alan Bonsell and that the unknown businessman who bought the books had been Alan Bonsell's father. This contradicted statements Bill Buckingham and Alan Bonsell had originally made in their sworn depositions. Lying under oath is a serious crime. We impeached a president about it. And people go to jail for it all the time. And it seemed to us that there was testimony that demonstrated clear inconsistency. I can't see into their hearts and know, you know the extent of the falsehood, but I do know that when we asked questions that should have elicited that information and they, they didn't provide that information. It was almost like this weird feeling that, you know, if, when you've watched a nature show and you know that the gazelle's about to get it from the lion, you know, I remember actually thinking, oh God, Judge Jones is going to kill Alan Bonsall. I don't, I can't look. And then Judge Jones, his face had gotten bright red at this point, and he goes, you tell me why you didn't say where that money came from to buy of pandas and people. And Alan Bonsall finally, under Judge Jones's grilling, started to get a little nervous and he started flapping his hands and he started stammering and he completely had lost this self-assured composure that he had earlier. And uh, finally he just said, well, I misspoke. Never in a million years did I ever think that we'd, you know, I'd be in a federal lawsuit when I was on the school board or have the school district in something like that over a one-minute statement, a one-minute statement. We weren't asking the teachers to become uh, priests or um, Protest pastors of some sort or lay ministers or anything like that. Just let the kids know the theories there. Let the kids do their own research and find answers for themselves. After six weeks, the trial concluded with closing arguments that were as divided as the town of Dover itself had become. What am I supposed to tolerate? A small encroachment on my First Amendment rights? Well, I'm not going to. I think this is clear what these people have done, and it outrages me. 
That's a statement of one citizen of Dover, Fred Callahan, standing up to the wedge that has been driven into his community and his daughter's high school by the Dover School Board's anti-evolution, pro-intelligent design policy. This trial has established that intelligent design is unconstitutional because it is an inherently religious proposition, a modern form of creationism. It is not just a product of religious people. It does not just have religious implications. It is, in its essence, religious. The shell game has to stop. In sum, Your Honor, I respectfully submit that the evidence of record shows that the plaintiffs have failed to prove that the primary purpose or primary effect of the reading of a four-paragraph statement on intelligent design, explaining that it's an explanation for the origins of life different from Darwin's theory, letting the students know there are books in the library on this subject, does not, by any reasonable measure, threaten the harm which the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment to the United States Constitution prohibits. But instead, the evidence shows that the defendant's policy has the primary purpose and primary effect of advancing science education by making the students aware of a new scientific theory one which may well open a fascinating prospect to a new scientific paradigm. Judge Jones said he would return a verdict promptly. On December 20th, 2005, Jones sent out his opinion by email. I went to work that day. We pretty much knew it was going to be out by noon, um, so I waited at work for a phone call. The decision came across the computer, I think it was 10.30. The 139-page opinion ruled that intelligent design is not science. Finding it had been introduced for religious reasons, Judge Jones decided it was unconstitutional to teach intelligent design in Dover science classes. Both defendants and many of the leading proponents of intelligent design make a bedrock assumption which is utterly false. Their presupposition is that evolutionary theory is antithetical to a belief in the existence of a supreme being and to religion in general. To be sure, Darwin's theory of evolution is imperfect. However, the fact that a scientific theory cannot yet render an explanation on every point should not be used as a pretext to thrust an untestable alternative hypothesis grounded in religion into the science classroom or to misrepresent well-established scientific propositions. The citizens of the Dover area were poorly served by the members of the board who voted for the intelligent design policy. Citing what he called the breathtaking inanity of the school board's decision, he found that several members had lied to cover their tracks and disguise the real purpose behind the intelligent design policy. The crushing weight of the evidence indicates that the board set out to get creationism into science classrooms and uh, intelligent design was simply the vehicle that they utilized to do that. Jones recommended to the U.S. attorney that he investigate bringing perjury charges against Buckingham and Bonsell for lying under oath. And the overwhelming evidence at trial, he said, established that intelligent design is a religious view, a mere relabeling of creationism, and not a scientific theory. In an era where we're trying to cure cancer, where we're trying to prevent pandemics, where we're trying to keep a science and math education on the cutting edge in the United States to introduce and teach bad science to ninth grade students makes very little sense to me. The school district was permanently forbidden to teach intelligent design in its science curriculum. 
the administration was ordered to pay the plaintiffs legal fees totaling more than a million dollars and the election of a new school board opposed to intelligent design meant no appeal of the ruling would be mounted in the wake of the trial time magazine named judge jones one of the 100 most influential people of the year but not everyone was so pleased with the judge's decision to put it bluntly i think he's a jackass i think he went to clown college instead of law school or else he went to law school and slept during the constitution classes because uh, his decision doesn't jive with the law it makes me feel sad we as a board were trying to make dover the best school district it could be yeah, that was our goal at least mine was i was trying to we were trying to take it up to make it the best I think, first of all, you have to say we had a fair trial. I'm just disturbed about the extent of his opinion that it went way beyond what, it, what he should have gone into deciding matters of science. The Discovery Institute was also displeased. Soon after the decision, the Institute published a 123-page book distancing itself from the case and criticizing the ruling as judicial activism with a vengeance the verdict turned out to be more controversial than judge Jones had imagined following the trial he received death threats Jones and his family had to be placed under round-the-clock protection I could never have imagined that I would receive a threats to my person in an establishment clause case but that's what happened in the uh, Dover case In the end, though, there is probably one thing everyone in the case can agree on. The issue is certainly not over. One of the things that we've learned is that the opponents of evolution are persistent and resilient. And they're still out there. I had thought at one point that we would make a breakthrough on this issue and change the scientific community in my lifetime. Now I'm somewhat sobered by the force of the counterattack that we have received and I see that it's going to be a longer process than that. I think history tells us that there is an enduring disagreement and dispute uh, in the United States as it relates to evolution. By no means did uh, my decision put a capstone on that and that will proceed uh, for generations I suspect. Sama dengan Indonesia, Amerika itu, pada saat guru biologi mau menjelaskan tentang evolusi, dengan disclaimer, ini hanya untuk pelajaran loh ya. Loh. Amerika ini berkebalikan dengan Inggris. Inggris dibentuk, negara Inggris adalah bagian dari gereja. ya. Jadi pemerintahan Inggris adalah pemerintahan agama. Tapi sekarang mereka berkembang menjadi pemerintahan sekuler. Amerika kebalikan. Mereka dibentuk atas dasar-dasar sekuler. Tapi sekarang agamis banget. ya Sama dengan Indonesia. Oh, tapi kalau Indonesia sejak awal ya. Sejak awal ya. Atas berkat nama Allah yang maha kuasa. Dan dengan didorongkan oleh keinginan luhur supaya berkehidupan kebangsaan yang bebas. Gitu kan? Bagaimana bisa bebas ya? Nah. Siapakah nenek moyang manusia menurut teori evolusi ya Bu ya? ya. Uh, kalau itu kan proses perubahan dalam evolusi ya Bu ya, yang mengakibatkan munculnya banyak spesies makhluk hidup di dunia. Jadi uh, apa ya kalau nenek moyang mah tetap dari evolusi. Mungkin sesu uh, sesuai, sesuai teori ya. Teori Tapi, iya kalau soalnya menurut Darwin uh, teorinya anak moyang manusia itu monyet ya itu nanti. Iya. Oh, gitu ya, berdasarkan gitu. seleksi itu karakteristik oh, dan betul, seleksinya. Hebat ya manusia dari monyet ke gitu, ya. Iya. <laughs> Berarti Bu, uh, menurut Ibu apakah Ibu percaya tentang teori evolusi tersebut? Kalau menurut saya, saya sangat tidak percaya ya. karena saya uh, seorang Muslim yang percaya dengan Al-Quran dan Nabi Adam, ya, seperti itu. Apakah boleh jika kita menjelaskan suatu ilmu atau teori kepada orang lain atau peserta didik tetapi bertentangan dengan agama yang kita anut? Kalau menurut saya sih, 
saya mah tidak boleh ya maksudnya sesuai dengan uh, agama saya gitu kalau seandainya teorinya itu baik ya boleh tapi kalau teorinya melenceng ya tidak gitu sesuai dengan aturan agama muslim kita seperti itu tapi gini loh bu sebenarnya kan misalnya kurikulum hmm. menjelaskan di situ bahwa kan teori macam-macam ya iya, bu otomatis iya. kita kan harus menjelaskan ke siswa dan ke iya. anak ya teori ini teori ini teori ini dengan kelebihan dan kekurangannya iya, ya betul. ya gitu nah, apakah tidak berbahaya itu bagi perkembangan jiwa berikutnya atau bagi pandangan nanti uh, idealis mereka gitu loh apalagi sekarang kan generasi muda sangat kritis ya iya gitu. Uh, uh, gimana cara menyampaikannya kan kalau seandainya seorang guru biologi kan semua harus disampaikan sesuai betul, dengan betul, teori-teori iya. tapi tetap masih lindungan uh, muslim maksudnya betul, wilayah betul, muslim betul. kita ya harus selesai kan materi tersebut betul, betul. gitu ya tapi kita kembali lagi maksudnya ke siswanya supaya si siswanya itu tidak melenceng betul. memahaminya seperti menguatkan, ya. menguatkan. Ini, ini hanya teori saja teori gitu. kalian jangan ikutin yang benar iya. yang Salah, kita kembali Al-Quran iya. dan Al-Hadis Al-Hadis gitu ya, kita, ya. Ya, sesuai agama kita gitu.